Hey everybody, it's Michael. And today I'm going to bring you a little video called Apneic Oxygenation with an Entitled CO2 Nasal Cannula or You Can't Do That. Um, now hopefully by now you're doing some kind of apneic oxygenation whenever you do a drug assisted intubation or a rapid sequence induction or what I like to call a goal oriented anesthesia for the purpose of placing an advanced airway. And uh, of course apneic oxygenation um, has been really the standard of care for probably the last five years now whereas you place a nasal cannula just a regular old nasal cannula running at 15 liters a minute on the patient uh, before and during the laryngoscopy to prevent um, desaturation and anoxia and we've proven over and over again that this works and works really well um, the recent controversy if you want to call it that comes from the idea that um, you can't use the entitled CO2 sampling nasal cannula to do that because, as it says right here on the package, um, these are made for liter flows of 5 liters or less. Um, and of course we need more. So that made me wonder, is that actually true? Um, I've seen some videos recently where people have talked about that kind of anecdotally and then some people have sought to prove that by showing that oxygen doesn't flow through the sampling line, which I thought everybody knew. Um, but they don't really actually test the flow and so I decided to do that. And in order to do that you need kind of a special thing that many of you may not realize is a special thing and you probably all have them or have access to them and that is a compensated Thorpe tube flow meter. You see in the picture here and what makes these things special is that they show you the true downstream flow um, by allowing some air to bypass on the inside. So when that little ball is riding up and down in the chamber there, it's actually showing you what the flow is downstream. And you can see if you cut the flow off, it drops to zero. So if the flow that you set or you want is actually 15 liters, you'll be able to see that 15 liters is showing up in the meter and know that it's true. So this is the perfect device to test how much flow these things will actually carry. And I'm going to compare it to a regular standard nasal cannula and looking at the entitled cannula because the argument has been that the entitled cannula is just going to pop right off of the the flow meter if you turn the flows up above five liters a minute and I just didn't think that was true um, so first and this is just kind of a control test because you've ever done apneic oxygenation with a regular um, nasal cannula you've seen that it will carry 15 liters of flow just fine and this Thorpe tube flow meter we have we're using today is from a older style high flow nasal cannula setup so it's going to deliver high flows you'll see it goes all the way up to 70 liters a minute now you're not ever I hope going to flow 70 liters a minute through a standard nasal cannula for oxygenation before an intubation we're just going to do it to prove that you can we're actually going to obviously work with flow liters or uh, flow rates much lower than that um, and again that's what's supposed to happen not a great idea not what you should be doing for patient care to run it all the way up to 70 liters a minute but it will certainly carry the 15 that you've been needing. Now that brings us to the nasal can or the uh, entitled nasal cannula. And just as a review, you know the entitled cannula doesn't flow oxygen out of the prongs or out of this little oral scoop thing here. It actually flows the oxygen out of these little pores which are above the nasal prongs. The, por the uh, prongs and the little scoop thing there are strictly for sampling. So what we're going to do is plug this into the flow meter and turn it up to 5 liters a minute, what they say it's going to do, and it flows just fine, no big deal. Um, then we're going to turn it on up to 15, and you see nothing happens. It's carrying the oxygen flow just fine. It doesn't come off. Um, it doesn't start whipping around. Uh, just for fun, we're going to turn it all the way up into the 40 range and then all the way up to the 70 range and you'll see it flopping around like that. Um, I took the noise off of that just so that it's just not loud whippy noise but you'll see that it's carrying the flows just fine and this is what you need to know about this that if you want to do apneic oxygenation with that it's not the flow that's going to stop you from doing that with an entitled CO2 cannula. The reason and this is right here in the package insert and I always tell people read the package inserts for your equipment for your drugs for everything because you will see right here it says the reason that it says or the reason they suggest liter flows of five liters or less is not because of the flow it's because of the CO2 washout this becomes an ineffective monitoring tool at greater than five liters a minute of oxygen flow which during apneic oxygenation for intubation doesn't matter we're not measuring CO2 in that instance what we care about is providing plenty of oxygen flow to provide that nitrogen washout 
so that we can have a nice long safe apneic period to get somebody intubated. So just to sum it up, if you want to use the entitled CO2 nasal cannula for apneic oxygenation, you can probably do that if that's all you have. Um, it may be better to use a regular nasal cannula, certainly a high flow cannula if you have one, um, just because that's what's been proven to work. But if the the monitoring nasal cannula is all you have, then that should work just fine to provide the 15 liters you need for apneic oxygenation. Um, you can hit me up on Twitter, that's at selffloatingcce. Um, you can see me on Facebook at my name, Michael Barrier, and you can send me an email, michaelbarrier at gmail.com. I uh, look forward to hearing from you guys. Thanks.